What's up guys? The Snowman here and the third major of the tennis season is here. It's my Wimbledon men's draw preview. Please check out my women's preview too if you're interested as well. But uh, plenty of exciting storylines on the men's side. Novak Djokovic is the defending champion from last year. We'll analyze the draw, see how the paths look for the uh, top seeds and make some predictions. And plenty to unpack as we pull up the first quarter of the men's draw. A couple of seeded players who had to pull out with injury. Karen Hatchinov and Pablo Carreño Busta. Of course, this draw really all about the two seed Novak Djokovic. The odds say that he has a better chance of winning it all than the other 127 players combined. So we'll get to Novak, but we start with the world number one, Carlos Alcaraz and his section. Alcaraz coming in hot off the heels of his first ever grass court title at Queen's Club in London. Defeated Alex Dimonor in the final to become one of the youngest players ever to win tour level titles on all three surfaces. More importantly, with that championship, Carlos leaped back over Djokovic for the number one ranking. They've been jockeying back and forth this season to see who's been best. As long as Alcaraz loses in the same round as Novak or performs better at Wimbledon, he'll retain that number one spot. Uh, Grass, probably the young Spaniard's worst surface of the three, but he's a clear number two betting favorite to win this title. The aforementioned Dimonor, the top seed in his mini section. Number 19, Alexander Zverev, a potential round of 16 opponent as as well. Uh, number 25, Nicholas Jari used his big serving to knock out Tsitsipas in Hala, so watch out for him. Also, Matteo Berrettini lurking. Remember, he made the Wimbledon final two years ago, but not in the best form at the moment. The 10 seed Francis Tiafo might be the best bet to stop Alcaraz in section one. Uh, Francis also now has trophies on every surface after winning Stuttgart two weeks ago. And at the bottom, number six, Holger Runa, relatively inexperienced, but uh, just a three and three lifetime record on grass. So there's no clear threats for Carlos to get to the semis, but a handful of players Players that could get hot. Our next section is about as fun as you can get. Three iconic names just floating around as unseated players. We'll get to them, but we're led by number three, Daniil Medvedev, who has an outside shot of becoming number one in the world with a Wimbledon title and some help. Of course, last year, the big headline was that Russian and Belarusian players weren't allowed to play at Wimbledon, so it's nice to see Medvedev and others back in action. Medvedev with five titles on the year and the most match wins in 2023, but he stumbled as of late. First round eggs at the French Open and no major highlights on grass the last couple weeks. I wouldn't assume that Medvedev just breezes through the first week. Manorino in the second round would be a nightmare as uh, the Frenchman holds a 4-2 head-to-head record over Medvedev 3-1 on grass. Manorino has beaten him at Wimbledon before. He also just defeated him on grass two weeks ago. Uh, the 28 seed Talion Greek Spore would be tough as well. Number 16 Tommy Paul is playing well. Uh, how about just above him Milos Raonic the former Wimbledon finalist back after a two-year layoff. Uh, who knows how the body will hold up, but it's exciting to see the missile back on his favorite surface. Number 12, Cameron Nori, last year's semi-finalist. And two popcorn matches at the bottom, the all-British affair, Murray versus Peniston. There's a surplus of hopeless romantics out there who think Murray can make a deep run this year. Uh, won the two challengers on grass at the start of the month. Andy Murray just missed out on being seeded for Wimbledon, but it's not the worst draw for him. Uh, he could play the winner of number five, Sitsipas versus Dominic Team. Once upon a time, that matchup was the 2019 ATP year and final, but Team has been struggling mightily to find his form the last couple of years since his wrist injury. And uh, Stefanos has lost in the first round of Wimbledon three out of the five times he's played it. So anything can happen in that match and in this section. Uh, in general, I'd love to see Murray make the semis I think he has a real shot the third quarter is the most wide open not really a front runner in sight at the bottom we have the four seed Casper Ruud who's basically spent his grass court season attending the weekend concerts in Scandinavia Ruud hasn't played a single tune-up tournament on grass in fact he's only three and five all time on the surface not a great surface for the no Norwegian at all because of all the topspin he puts on his shots he is uh, not a flat ball striker 
With Rude being the top seed in this quarter, that presents massive opportunity to everyone around him. It's going to bode really well for number 26, Denis Shapovalov, a player who's had a brutal season thus far, but made the Wimbledon semis two years ago. Excellent grass court weaponry. Same goes for number 20, Roberto Bautista Agu, coming off a nice showing in Hala. Uh, but the real opportunity is there for guys like number 9, Taylor Fritz, and number 8, Yannick Sinner in the top part. If you remember, Sinner was up two sets to none on Djokovic last year in the quarterfinals. He had just beaten Alcaraz in the fourth round, but couldn't quite close out Novak. So Yannick Sinner, the number one biggest winner of this men's draw. He's got the other Sarundalo in the first round. Schwartzman or Ketsmanovic in the second. All three of those guys would rather be playing on clay or hard court. Uh, Dan Evans can be a tricky opponent, but really this section is set up nicely for Sinner to make the semifinals and perhaps book a rematch with Novak. Novak Djokovic. Speaking of Novak, final section, and there's a lot of impressive statistics to choose from. A lot of things in favor of the second seeded Djokovic. Coming off the uh, Roland Garros title last month, he now has the most majors in men's history. Seven titles at Wimbledon. He's aiming to equal Federer for the most ever. Those seven are more than the rest of the tour combined with four Wimbledon titles. Uh, even more remarkable, Djokovic has 86 career match wins at the All England Club. The rest of the current top 20 combined Bind has 85 wins at Wimbledon, so he trumps the rest of the top 20 all by himself. And that's why we see him as such a heavy betting favorite to win what would be the Serbian's 24th major title. He just has so much more grass court savvy and big tournament experience compared to everyone else in this draw aside from Andy Murray. No immediate first week threats for Djokovic. He should be able to work his way into this tournament. At the top, bad luck for number seven, Andre Rublev, who's been drawn in the same quarter as Djokovic for the third major in a row. Uh, he'll be happy at least that both number 30, Kyrgios, and number 11, Oje Aliasim, are heavily out of form. Kyrgios has huge question marks. He's the X factor as always. Just one match played this season, a loss in Stuttgart a couple weeks ago as he tries to ramp up for Wimbledon. Uh, we know how good he is when his body and mind are right, especially on grass, making the final last year, but the knee is not in good shape. Uh, Nick with all sorts of physical and health issues right now, so very unlikely he makes it through seven best of five set matches. Uh, my honest prediction as a Federer fan is that Djokovic claims this title quite easily. Maybe we get a fun Alcaraz Murray semi on the other side. Maybe Sinner provides a little resistance in this half, but ultimately I don't see anybody stopping Novak on grass except for himself. He'd be my pick to win. Thanks a lot for watching my men's Wimbledon draw preview. Uh, please leave a comment. Let me know what you liked, what you didn't like about my analysis. If you think uh, Novak Djokovic will repeat as the champion in London. Uh, also check out my women's preview as well if you're interested and uh, subscribe to the Snowman Sports Media for more tennis content and weekly videos. Cheers.